What's up YouTube, Sherman XSoft here coming at you guys with a brand new video and today is going to be an awesome day because it is day one of PAX guys. Now I'm going to be going over there across the street to go check out this event. I'm going to be trying to talk to as many developers as I can, anything that looks cool so this way I can bring you guys lots of information. Hopefully capture some game footage. I'd like to go ahead and try out Dauntless. I know Friday the 13th the game is going to have a panel tonight and I'm going to be there for that. The Nintendo Switch is going to be here. I want to get hands on with that. There's a lot of stuff that I want to go ahead and do. There's a lot of stuff that I want to cover here, guys. So you know what? Let's go ahead and get on this journey. And while we're at it, guys, if you enjoy the vlogs, please feel free to go ahead and slap that like button because it will really help me out. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out PAX.
Get out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Our program will begin shortly. All right. Let's do it. Um, yeah, so welcome to the My Little Pony panel. <laughs> I'm talking Friday the 13th, the game. Um, Ronnie, if you want to introduce yourself and everyone on this illustrious panel. I'll introduce myself and we'll let everyone else do their job. All right. All right. I'm Ronnie Hobbs, the co creator. Yeah. Speak up. Uh, Ronnie Hobbs, co creator. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ben Strauss. I Pick say, up. Pick up. get get out. Uh, I say early 2017 a lot on social media. Uh, I'm the community guy on the team, and I'm also a junior producer at Gun Media. I'm uh, David Langoliers. I'm creative manager at Elphonic. I do a lot of the design work and management and production there. What David really means is they do all the work. Just to be honest, Ilphonic has killed it for us, and they don't get the things that they deserve. No, so, they, they, they really deserve all that thanks. Yeah, yes. if you guys still follow Ilphonic on Twitter, stay with them, and tell them how much we appreciate them, because they're the guys doing the hard work, and we just kind of get to follow up and make sure the stuff Shout out to right. everybody at the office back there. Yeah, because they're, they're yeah. probably still working. Awesome job, guys. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Um, I am Adam Sessler. I am professionally bald. <laughs> and uh, my name is Randy Greenback. I'm the executive director on the game. So, um, as Ben's been hinting at, Ronnie, if, if you want to address the thing that really is on everyone's, you know, everyone wants to play the game. Beta came out. When is the game coming out? Everyone keeps saying, we keep saying, early 2017. Uh, there's a good reason why there isn't a specific date, and it's not that we're trying to be deceptive in any way. Yes, I guess large companies who have lots of resources and lots of money and a huge dev team, they can plan their schedules out way in advance, and they can put padding on their release dates. So any game that comes out within six months, they usually give you a release date because they have the resources to plan ahead. We don't. So there's a reason we haven't told you a date yet, and that's because we're going through console certification. So that, that's a tricky process for the guys at Aphonic, for us. Every time you fail certification, you come back with new problems. You fix those problems, you come back with 10 more. Then you pass step one, and you get step two, and then three, then four. So for a small team, it's very tricky to nail everything on the first try. So with Xbox and PlayStation, that's currently what we're facing is. We're trying to get through console certification. The guys at Aphonic are working day and night, trying to get these bugs fixed, trying to get all the features finished. And once we do get through that, we'll have a clearer date. But what we didn't want to do is just go, hey, March, and then we miss it, and then everyone's mad. So when we say early 2017, we're not trying to hide anything. We're not trying to be deceptive, like Adam said. It's just a, a matter of resources and time, and us not actually knowing the date. When we know the date, you will know, I promise. The whole planet will know, it'll be on every website. It'll be on this wall behind us, probably. I'll Even finally though, yeah. be able to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to talk about console certification or anything you want to add to that, like... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a process that you have to go through. You have to submit to Microsoft and Sony, and they, they check for all these different standards. And it, it takes time. Um, it's just a matter of bugs that need to be fixed. We're very close at this point, but yeah, it's like you said, it's, we, we go to it, we submit, they come back with a list of things, we get those fixed, and we're just going to have to do it a couple times. You'd be surprised yeah. what they check for, too. Like, oh, if, if someone has a, a Guitar Hero controller plugged in, and they pause the game and crashes, you're like, why is anyone plugging a Guitar Hero? <laughs> <laughs> someone yelled, but, but, hey, I, I, I think, I mean, you guys are being really humble. I, I, I think the one thing why I have so enjoyed working alongside these guys through the process of this game being made is, you know, at the point of the Kickstarter, there was a decision that they wanted to be transparent. And they wanted to be able to detail to the audience and the people that were supporting them 
what the process of the game was going to be. And even though it's a little bit weird not to have a release date, because that's so typical if you're used to any other game coming out, that really is a product of that transparency, that they don't want to say anything that they cannot stand beside, you know, yeah. behind, excuse me, and say, like, that's going to be the date. So it sounds weird as if they're trying to shift and say, like, hey, we don't know when the game's coming out. They don't, but they really do know it's early 2017, and the minute that you guys have certainty as to the week, sure. the day that it's going to be coming out, you guys are going to be saying it. And I just want to say, like, if you guys really want to get a nice write-up, if you want to read something uh, that really, really goes into even more on this, uh, our co uh, the co-creator and the founder of uh, Gun, Wes Keltner, he, did a, he does nice little write-ups uh, on the status of the game on our forums, uh, which are pretty active, but... We could talk all we want, but what's really nice is you can read about this, and it goes really in depth. I mean, he spends a lot of time on these, and it's something that's really ref you know refreshing that we're able to talk so openly with you guys. And we hope that you guys uh, feel the same way. But I definitely recommend checking those out if you want, or not. Your call. Um. So you have a video. Well, yeah. Well, you know, don't get too excited yet. Yeah, it's kind of a news guy video. Yeah, we we have some things to show you today. Um, we just came out of beta, obviously, so we're going to talk about the beta in a second. But we do we have a video we released a couple weeks ago that this video is nothing new, but we wanted to show everyone in case they missed it. And we're going to talk about some things that are in the video that people really may have not caught up on or they didn't know about. So, so yeah. So yeah, this came out on Friday the 13th, so you'll notice that the song that's going to be played is very appropriate. Victim, that's uh, Chad. He's our resident um, preppy guy. As you can tell at the studio, we really love Chad. Yeah. That was Ben getting run over. Yeah, that, that was, was me in the car, so that was awesome. Yeah. I did One of the greatest days of my life, actually. So, even though that video's already been out for a while, I know some people still haven't seen it. In that video, we introduced throwing knives. That was a something we had planned as an alternative to some of the counselors who were able to get away from Jason, like Vanessa and the, fast, the faster characters. Throwing knives help you close distance on characters. It was something we had planned, so we showed that off. That was actually a Misfits song, so we, we were proud to say that they were in our soundtrack, or they were they're in the game, they're not on our soundtrack, but... Let, let, let's just take a second. Yeah, I'm old, so I love them, but yeah. the Misfits, anyone recognize them? Yeah. 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 They're on the soundtrack for the game, and that was of their choosing. Yes, so. yes. So that was pretty awesome for us, just growing up a Misfits fan to get to put their song in our game. That was awesome. Uh, but at the very end there, you saw the uh, car. Like, in our beta, we didn't have that. Like, that was not something we had. People were standing in front of the car. They were trolling people. And the only way to get rid of someone was to shoot them with a the gun. 
Absolutely. So now we, we implement it where you can run people over. So it causes all kinds of happy accidents. You know, it's, <laughs> and, and, for those awesome. of you, and for those of you that are going to go out there and try to run as many people over, we will have things in place to try to discourage you from it. I mean, like Jason will kill you while you're too, too busy trying to kill your friends. So try not to go too happy. Jason's a natural deterrent. Well, I, I was going to say, I the, the first time that that was finally present in the game, and Jason saw that was in front of the car, and I was driving. I'm like, oh, cool, I'm going to run him over. You don't win in that encounter. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, I didn't the know baby. that. It was like, yeah, ooh. yeah, and suddenly, you know, hand through window, everything was ugly. The day that that happened in the playtest, I heard Adam in his microphone. Oh, I'm going to run Jason over, and I'm just grinning because he didn't know about that part. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he goes, Oh, we're going to die. I, got to, I knew what happened. I didn't even have to see it. Go down. But th that was something we released a couple weeks ago on Friday, thirteenth, more than a couple weeks ago. Um, and we just got out of beta, so thanks to everyone for playing the beta. We were going to flash a bunch of crazy stats up there about all the number of people who played the beta, but we were number two on Twitch right behind League of Legends, and that doesn't happen for a beta. Yeah, hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of players were yeah. playing. People died millions of times, right? Yeah, I mean, crazy numbers that were like, we could put them up and you wouldn't believe it. We were going to do you a know, nice so. little infographic, but I, I'm literally not kidding. Wes is, I mean, we're here and Wes is working on yeah. uh, various aspects of the game, so we did not have time to make a fun little picture. We're trying to make the game. So, so anyway, it was really awesome. Thank you for playing. Uh, the servers were a little weird for us. We're a small team, so people aren't used to seeing a real beta. They're used to seeing a marketing beta, which comes out a week before the game comes out, and it all works perfectly. Right. Well, our beta didn't do that. So, But it was still fun. It was awesome. We learned a lot of things from the beta. A couple that we're going to show you right now. Some of these things we're showing you were direct feedback from the beta. So we listened to everyone. We went through all the surveys. Ephonic went through the surveys. Randy, Wes read like a thousand surveys. A million. Yeah, He's still reading surveys. He's still, it, they weren't a simple yes or no question. They were paragraph form. Oh, we so so uh, we're going to show you two things that we changed about the beta um, that was directly tied to feedback from the player base. So here we go. Nice. Don't let them. So real quick, if you played the beta, you knew that firecrackers were probably the least useful item in the game. <laughs> They were designed to be a deterrent, or actually to fool Jason, you could throw something down, and if he was using scents, he would see sound pings, and you could run the other way. When well, out, obviously, firecrackers can stun Jason. So, um, Randy, uh, you guys want to add anything to firecrackers? It is a projectile now. So. They're super overpowered right now. Yeah, yeah. as you can see in the video, <laughs> Jason was stuck for like a minute and a half. But once again, this was just me and Randy messing around a couple of days ago capturing footage for this, just to show you that firecrackers. But, but I, I, I think that speaks to what I still think is, and this is why I was so in love with this project when I got on board two years ago, is that you're playing against all the reasonable concepts of game design. Like, this game is predicated on overpowering one player. And that doesn't yep. make sense. Like when you think about multiplayer, you're trying to create a sense of balance, but it seems like it's unique depending on who you're playing or, or, or on what various side. But in this, like you have, like the more Jason became OP, the more fun this game became to play. And yeah. that's where you know something is, is subtle or seemingly you know, you know Im immodest as the firecrackers really starts to become important because it's just that quick little moment where you can stun Jason and you have maybe. 10, 20 seconds of life yeah, that exactly. you can maintain. Yeah. Because yeah. It really, the whole game is against you if you are a counselor. Okay. Yeah, and that was by design. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I was just going to say that. That was like one of my favorite things hearing from the beta, like the feedback of people on the videos of YouTube and everything. It's like, Jason's so overpowered. And it's like, yeah. 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 You can't have it <laughs> in the other way. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> it's like a yeah. movie. He's a giant, immortal man. That's yeah. <laughs> this game does not work if Jason's not OP. Yeah. So anyone who doesn't like that, we're sorry. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, Jason has to be OP. You have to be scared of Jason every time you see him. If you're not, the game doesn't work. 
This isn't about you as the counselors versus Jason. This is you versus Jason. You need to survive. You need to take him out. You need to figure a way not to lose. You can either say, screw everyone else, which we saw a lot of that in the beta, or you can work together, which we saw a lot of in the beta. And that's what's really cool. This is all about player agency. So you as Jason, go nuts, have fun. That's all you. But when you're a counselor, we want you to feel like you can do something on your own or you can do something as a team. Yeah, so firecrackers. Also they, they've changed. And the next thing that we are going to show you is new is a. You ready for that? Yep. <laughs> Get good, right? I'm trying. <laughs> Love it. No matter what they do to you, you cannot die. You can never die. I'm proud of that shot. Do you want to see what happens when you yes. miss with the flare gun? Yeah, show them what happens when you miss with <laughs> this, this brings it back. Jason is OP. So, All right. aim correctly. Ready to go? Doesn't end well. So, don't miss. Get good. That's the lesson. Yes. Don't miss. Don't miss. So, <laughs> we, we decided that, okay, flare guns need to do something other than shot into the sky, Cape Fear style, right? And, and sh actually be able to aim it and shoot at Jason. So, if you aim it correctly in his head, you will see that stick into his mask, and it's pretty awesome. Um, but if you miss, you know, that takes time. For you to recover from the animation, and it'll probably kill you. So that was, those two were things were big trade-offs from the beta, where we took player feedback and discussed them internally with Afonic. And those were all things that we wanted. Like we were like, those are good ideas. Those are perfect ideas. Let's do them. So that's what we've been doing for a couple of weeks. So having said that, every time we put something new in the game, and even you know now you have to go back to certification. So you know some of the stuff we put in the beta. Um, didn't delay our game at all, but it was something we had to go back and reevaluate timelines and schedules and things like that. So, um, yeah, you ready to show? Oh, you are showing. We're ready to go. Oh, yeah. that, that's it, everyone. Pack Thank you. So, <laughs> does anyone know what that is? Pack and Act Lodge. Why don't you do, Sean? <laughs> Better <laughs> not. Pack and Act Lodge was the house from Part Two. So, Friday Thirteen Part Two. That's where Ginny and the whole crew. That was the counselor training center. Um, that they were staying at. So that house doesn't exist anymore in my life. Some rich people bought it, tore it down, and you can't see it anymore. So, and there are no blueprints online whatsoever. So you, there's you, no floor plan. So we had to watch the movie about a billion times. The amount of times that we watched and took screenshots. Pausing the movie every two seconds, oh different angles. God. We finally had the layout. We had the floor plans. The phonics been working for months. This is the outside of the of the, uh, the house. Um, anyone who's seen the movie knows that that's exactly what it looks like. So, no one's seen that yet, so um, we actually have a video of me and Randy messing around in the house. Um, 
And once again, if you're familiar with the movie, you will notice that it's pretty much a replica. So. Yes. Hey, well, hey, hey, yes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Love it. What are you doing? Randy's man? jumping ahead. All right, everyone, turn off your phones. What's up? All right. So that was part, that's Pakenak Lodge. Uh, obviously we didn't, we had a secret kill there that we're not gonna show you. But. but on the topic of the audio, like the music, which is one of the more, you know, since I've been doing all the play tests, like a lot of that audio came in rather recently, but it, yeah. it, it's dynamic. It's not happening because the game tells it to. It's because of what's happening yeah, in the course like of actually playing a match. Player driven, if you wanna talk about sound or anything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all driven off of how close the player is to Jason, their fear level, uh, if they've seen somebody else dead in the game, there's all these different things that factor into the music and how it's scaling up and down yeah. um, to keep it, you know, to try and keep it in line with the movies and let you know how high your fear level is. Pro tip when you're playing music, very important. Pay attention to the cues, and uh, we're still gonna screw with that anyways, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Music something. is bad in this Expect game. something soon coming with music. <laughs> yes, we have something planned on that front that we're not showing today, but. Oh yeah. Um, there's something very interesting for that. Um, so, we, obviously you just saw J8 uh, from Surprise. Jason Takes Manhattan. So you want to flash him back up there? I can. I can. So no one's seen this yet. <laughs> so, um, He's a pretty people boy. constantly ask us, when, when are you going to show us new Jasons? And, you know, they take time. So each Jason takes us roughly two months to create. And there's seven Jasons in our game, so you do the math. They're, not, gotta, all, they're not all being created the same month. You know, so it's a long process, and uh, as you can see, he's wet, he's shiny. Um, Who here has seen uh, Jason Takes Manhattan? Show of hands. A few people. Almost so everybody. Good. Oh, people. So, there he is. That's good. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you should go see it. I, I don't think anyone's seen him yet, except us. <laughs> it's as phenomenal as it sounds. <laughs> We have him breathing if you want to see that. Oh, yeah? He's just standing around breathing like Kane Hodder does. <laughs> so for those of you unfamiliar... That's uh, not it. <laughs> okay, well Randy screws things That's up. That's not it either. <laughs> Wait a minute, can we stop here? Are you going to show Kill something this. that we're going to regret? <laughs> no. Everyone listen to my voice and don't look at the screens. <laughs> um, so, what, uh, so for those of you that don't know, Kane Hodder, uh, who played in four of the movies, as well as part eight, that, uh, that was his second movie. Uh, he did the motion capture. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have seen that. So uh, we're really proud. Like We got to show off part 7 during the beta. We're showing off part 8 now. He also did part 9. Uh, we haven't... We don't have uh, Jason X. Stop asking, please. Please. Yeah, I... I yeah, you we had a fan vote and he came in fourth. He so came in fourth. That's y'all's problem. <laughs> As you can tell, Ronnie is very people friendly. Yeah, but... Uh, they try to be. Right? Randy, have you fixed things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, fixed. Cool. And now look at the screens. Thank you. It's just J.A. breathing, but that's him in game. If you've ever seen Kane Hodder, that's his patented breathe that he does. So do remember each Jason is going to have unique um, aspects, is a good way to put it. So uh, we can't wait to show off a little bit more, but right now we're really happy that Part 8, you guys are the first ones to see him. And he breathes. Also I know all of you were worried about whether or not he was going to be breathing. You should try to mocap breathing. Remember, you could have been out of bars. <laughs> Once again, that's just Elphonic doing awesome shit. Like, really, that's nothing to do with us. We're like, hey, make him breathe. And they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've got good animators. It's not me. We have good animators. We do. <laughs> um, so we have another video. The kill, yeah. the kill video? Oh, we yeah. yeah. Can, can we kill the feed in between these? What? 
Oh, you got something else that's gonna pop up? No, no, no. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. What websites were you on before we Is started? A bazillion. You got those pictures. I'm very intrigued. Maybe websites right that could be considered. <laughs> Look, I randomly That's look up porgy right. pictures too. It's really nothing to be ashamed it's of. It's not those pictures of dogs, is it? I think. No, no, it's not. Maybe not that guy. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Yeah, ready. <laughs> Run. I hear that hurts. That's the first time we've shown Jason Six, so from Fire 13 Part Six, Jason Lynch. First time we showed him killing people with his spear. So, um, anybody seen that movie and love it? Yeah, that kill is borrowed from the credit card scene by the BW Bug, where he puts your face in the water and slams her. So, that was pretty cool for us. But, but also, I, I, I think it's a good time to remind people that the kills in the game don't really exploit the fact that it's digital that because of Tom Savini and people who are involved, that these are yeah. kills that are designed to be something you could do with analog, you know, rudimentary ways of, 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 of makeup, and that's why they have that physical force in them. Yeah, not to mention it takes like a month per kill, it seems like, to get these from start to finish. Just, I know we've said that before, and, but it's like nonstop work on these kills, but there's a reason, because they're all mocap. It's stunt actors and Kane, and getting the animations to line up and making sure that everyone sees the same thing across the different networks. Like if you played the beta, sometimes you'll notice that what you see is not what someone else sees because of internet speeds and like the handshake just doesn't line up. So that's something that we spend a lot of time on too. But uh, That never happened. What? <laughs> Any of what you just said <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the beta. People flying into space and stuff. And, yeah. Now we're working on all that stuff. It's getting better every day. It is. We're going to... Um, that video, Randy? Which one? So, I don't know. We'll one. talk about his abilities next? Yeah, so what we want to do before we go to Q&A is talk about Jason's abilities and um, answer some questions that have been asked to us about, hey, why is something one way? Why can't Jason do this? Why can't he? So this is like a game design uh, theory talk here, and we're going to explain some things about his abilities and how they work in case you didn't know. Or So right away, it's the uh, radio video? Is it the radio? Yeah. Radio video. So if you're not familiar with how the radios work in our game, or if you're just not familiar with the sound, um, Jason has an ability called Sense. And when he uses that ability, that's what you see the red buildings light up. It saturates the world so that you can see counselors who are, have high fear. Or he can detect sound pings. And usually those sound pings is a counselor who happens to be sprinting, making a lot of noise. So one, one way that you can fool Jason is to turn a radio on, which generates lots of noises, and to kind of sneak out the back or have them on the whole game, that way every time Jason uses his sensibility, he kind of burns it and wastes it because he's going to that location and Jason needs to destroy the radios so that they can reuse them. 
Um, so a lot of people were confused in the beta about how that worked. Um, for some reason, they didn't understand that sprinting puts off white noise rings. So just like the radio, they're essentially the same thing. So. So yeah, we're, 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 we're listening and, and kind of figuring out uh, other ways to kind of show us senses and to ensure that players know what is actually going on. So we want to give proper feedback. So uh, like one of the things we did was uh, augment and work on his senses, right? Yes, exactly. So at one current time or another, people don't know that none of these abilities were in our game. This is coming down a little, we're going to share something with you here. Um, there's no visual, but at one point, at one point Jason had only three abilities. He had sensory, which were those sound pings that you saw right there. They were only on a mini map. And Jason's world was free of clutter. So there was nothing going on in the world. It was just his mini map. And he could only tell where counters were by pulling up the mini map or by pulling up his large map. So, which is really cool for pulling you into the experience because Jason couldn't track you in the real world. He can only track you on his map. Well, it turns out staring at a map sucks. For like half a game so he would just walk around for like an hour staring at a map and so we decided that's a bad idea so no one actually knows this kind of stuff so we thought we'd share it with you um and at one point his morphs you know we had a lot of conversation with people over the past months jason is op how can he morph around the map that's not fair and blah 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 right whatever that bad it is but um yeah. Yeah, at one point we didn't have jason morphing around the map at all we and it jason, wasn't fun we had jason running around the map and it was, it was, I, mean, I mean, I would have to say, because I, I, I play this game probably less frequently than all of you guys. Yeah, I, I, I stand up once a week. And watching that change, but there was that one point where it wasn't just, you know, suddenly Jason became so powerful. But with the, uh, once the voice started to work, and that you can only hear other players in proximity to them, and that's true for Jason too, yeah. it created the most beautiful balancing act, where if I can't talk to other players, I want to naturally go find other players so I can work with them. Yep. Once you're with other players, well then you create a cluster of counselors and Jason can sense you and that's the more appealing group of people that he's going to go for. Because yep. if there's five counselors, the chance you might get two or three of them if you go find them is, is really good. Yep. And you know, as, as we talk about OP and the fact that the game is sort of deliberately imbalanced, that's the central balancing that actually happens in the game and it's what makes it work. It's so cool. Yeah, we had we had them. We had, we had one point where there's no morph whatsoever, and it was just Jason running around miles of map, and it was Assassin's Creed with nothing to do in between. It was Assassin's Creed, but boring. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> so Jason could never catch anyone unless we make our map the size of a shoebox. Um, there's no way to pull that yeah. type of intensity off. So we, we went back to the drawing board. And we're like, okay, give him a couple morphs a game, and then we gave him like five, and then he would use all five in like two minutes, and then he would be stuck running around the map again. <laughs> So, the, what you see today is not what this game used to be. Um, Blood Ping, he had something called Blood Ping, which uh, would let him see the counters like he does now, with their lit up red. However, it wasn't tied to their fear at all. At one point, we didn't even have fear as a counselor stat, like the composer stat, we didn't even have that. It would just let him see where you were at no matter what, at any given moment, and he could take you by surprise. Turned out that wasn't fun either. So, anytime we hear feedback on our, on our abilities, just know that we went through probably 30 or 40 iterations to get to what we have today. Um, which leads me into our current questions that people wanted to know, like, why does Jason morph? You know, and at one point we had conversations, okay, if he can't morph, um, which is our way of showing you how he got around the films, right? Because Jason's everywhere at once in the movies. So if he can't morph around the map, what could he do? What are the other ways that he could get around a map? Anyone have an idea or a suggestion? He can fly. Maybe. Jason can't fly. He can drive. <laughs> and we know it sucks in tunnels. He's got a hoverboard. Yeah, so if we don't want him to run around the map for hours, if we don't want him to fly, the remake, if you've seen the remake, you know that Jason had tunnels. Okay, so we're like, okay. At one point, we were like, maybe Jason has tunnels. And we're like, you still have to run through the tunnels. It's not a vacuum seal. It's not a, it's, it's not a little thing at the bank, right? So we couldn't do tunnels. So that brought us back to Morph, and that was our way of paying tribute wait, to the wait, film. And also, it's fully justified by Part 8. Like, exactly. like, he, there's he so much morphing in Part 8, which, yeah. like, remember, it's Jason takes Manhattan. Apparently, he is everywhere in Manhattan all at the same time. And so yes. Morphing just becomes the only answer for it. Exactly. So we did, you know, there were a lot of people who were like, just make Jason sprint really, really fast. But we did that. So sorry. Uh, we tried it. It wasn't fun. Your idea is good. 
it basically just comes <laughs> in fine. Um, it so, didn't look right either. It didn't look right. I'm see, still a fan see, of Harper Moore's yeah. in tunnels underneath Manhattan. <laughs> see, he's just got his own private little like, I'm going to get there. We don't have a Manhattan. We're professional game development, guys. Professional we don't have a Manhattan. I know, right? So this is, these are the things that go on. So that brings us to like what he has today. Um, people wanted to know how Sense works. Rand, do you have the two Sense videos? So if you don't, if you don't know about our, some, some of the finer attributes of our game, um, every counselor has a composer stat, okay? And that affects their fear level. So if you have a high composure stat like the girl next door, um, it takes a lot to get her scared. So she shows up less when Jason uses his sense because she can keep her fear under control. The, the counselors with low uh, composure stat show up immediately. So we're going to show you, if you don't know, what it's like to search for someone with no fear and search again for that same counselor who has high fear so that you can see. So I just activated sense right there, and this is scanning the world for noise, which were the white sound pings, or any counselor that's lit up in red, which represents that they're frightened. So it's important to know I was a uh, I was uh, a different counselor in that in that, and I was hiding in a closet in there, yeah. and I was well hidden, but I was I also chose the right character with the highest composure. Yeah, the girl yeah. next door. In that particular video, you were Jenny. Jenny Myers to go next door. And then I actually went and scared Randy and came back to the exact same position. And, and then we play it. And there she is. All the way across the map. Now I have to figure out where she is. So you pull your map up. It doesn't tell me exactly unless I'm close by. But fear plays a big role in our game. So a lot of people like to abuse Vanessa in our game with her speed. That's Athletic what, girl. Yeah. We nerfed her a little bit. And um, so fear is much more valuable now, um, keeping your, your composure. So eventually Ronnie found me in that match and, uh, and ended up catching up Oh, so yeah, right here. So if, if you string together combos, so I use Sense, and now I'm going to use Morph while Sense is activated. So I had a pretty good idea where, he was, where she was hiding it. And there you go. So, stringing together our, our abilities is... Do I even kill you here? I don't think I killed you. I think you tried. I think I just stopped. Yeah. Hey, she has new clothes on, by the way. If you didn't know, uh, Wes tweeted out today that we showed off some of our clothing customization options, so... Yeah, and, and uh, Jason, like, only has to get close to a counselor, and he instills fear in them. It's kind of like a game of horseshoes, right? You just have to get close enough yeah, there are, there are a lot of, if anyone's familiar with horror games in the past 20 years, the fear meter has been a big, you know, everything from Haunting Ground to Eternal Darkness, Eternal Darkness yeah. to, you know, all the um, Thulu games at that team. And do remember, the longer the game progresses, uh, essentially the more powerful Jason becomes in the sense that he'll activate Rage. So Rage kind of just changes the game from, oh, you might survive to how, how soon does it take until Jason gets you. And that's something that we really want to instill in you guys is that Jason is OP. You are going to die. You need to figure out how to get out of there quickly. So a good Jason player, you don't even really have to be good at Jason. You just have to wait for Rage to show up and, well, you had a good life. Thank you for trying. We'll see you again <laughs> next time. Does anyone not know the Rage uh, ability? Who does know from the beta the rage? Okay, so the rage allows you to it refills all your abilities faster at a quicker rate, and also and what triggers that? What is it? And what triggers rage? Uh, time, time based. Yeah. Time. So it's nothing Jason has to do. It's just he's getting over time. time. Your chances of survival are running out. So that means get a plan together, get with your friends, and get out. He's getting very mad at the lack of murder going on. And so he can well, bust down I mean, doors. Too. Even if you are able with your friends to be able to like, you know, get a car started and you can drive out, that immediately notifies Jason that something's happening. You then add in the morph ability. Don't think that if you get in the car you can quietly drive out of Crystal Lake. Typically, he will find out and you suddenly have Jason yeah. right there in the headlights. It's one of the coolest and most dramatic aspects of the game. But yeah. uh, it's like... Every time you think you have it, there's always just that next step that you have to get past. So, d did you guys watch videos like YouTube or watch Twitch guys, like just show of hands? I mean, were you watching the gameplay? Good. All right, so, I mean, you guys, it seems like you enjoyed it because you're here, so that's, thank you. Uh, the kind of moments we're trying to instill are those ones where you're like, oh, everything's hunky. Oh, God! 
those kind of moments. That's what we love about horror games, right? So the more that we give you the tools as Jason or as counselors to achieve those moments, we hope that really keeps you coming back. So are we, do we let them ask questions? One to Q&A? Yeah, you're ready right. to go. This is my favorite part. Okay, go I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally going out there. I, I come out there. I'm coming to you. So just sit there. Well, uh, you can. I can probably get to you. Just come to me, like me in the middle. So raise hands, please. And just so uh, we will try to answer any question we can. Like we're not going to hide things from you unless we have to. Like the release date. <laughs> yeah, no, early 2017. We don't know. We don't know it. So anyone who asks about the release date is getting banned forever. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that on the back end, right? Yeah, maybe. We'll Hi guys, my name is Nick. Just a quick question. Uh, are y'all going to be doing any more betas in the future? No, actually... Oh, oh, actually, that's a good question because people uh, just say, Hey, you should turn the beta back on until the game comes out. What's up with these four-day betas? And we're like, it costs us like five grand a day to do a yeah. beta. <laughs> if you didn't know, it's expensive to do a beta. That's something that a lot of people don't know. They see AAA companies do a beta and it's on for... I played MMO Two betas weeks. that were on for a month. And I'm like, how do they pay for that? Because we. But it also we, affects like once something's a beta and you and it's made somewhat public. Yeah. You can't really update it that much because you can't work it because. Yeah, we can't even touch it. that build. We yeah. have to go work on another build separately. You know, so we, it's not an easy task. A beta is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. AAA companies make it seem easy, but they put a tremendous amount of work and resources into betas. And so to answer your question, we don't know. Maybe. Is that a good enough answer? That's a good enough. Answer. I don't, good know. I, just say, I don't know for him, but it's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just know that it costs a lot of time and money. I yeah. mean, tremendous amount of time, and, money, especially and, for I a think small we got it, guys. It's also taking time away from finishing the game, yeah. right? And actually bringing it out for everybody with all of the features on all of the platforms. So it's one of those things that we have to really weigh yeah. the cost and the time cost as well. Yeah, it's very hard to do feature development while you're also supporting like a live product. Because his team has to stop. Difficult. How many guys on your team have to stop and monitor the beta and the servers, all of them. Yeah. So that means they can't work on the game. Just kidding. You know. But well, it's, a, it's a good portion. Yeah. So it's a fair part of the. So story. maybe. Well, yeah. Hey. Two, right? Okay, I got a question. Hey, first off, good job on the game. The originality of the game, awesome. Um, also, um, can we get a uh, let's see a character where the brother don't die first in the movie? <laughs> hey, that's a good point. <laughs> hey, dude. Uh, here's something else. That's awesome. People don't know this. People didn't, like, why aren't they showing their male counselors? Why aren't they showing their male counselors? Why do we only have female people? Like, when we put that kill trailer out, it was nothing but girls getting murdered. That was not a pleasant inbox day. <laughs> How dare you? I'm like, there's a reason the dudes aren't ready. It's because we sold the ability to be a counselor for $10,000 on Kickstarter. So and only dudes grand. bought it. And it was only dudes. So five of our male counselors are Kickstarter backers. Well, that takes a long time. To go back and forth with them and get their likeness in our game. We had to get all these photos of them from every angle. And they want updates. Yeah. They want to change so, their character. They so shaved one day and then they're like, well, now my so, character doesn't look like me. That was an extreme task. It was just so. So there's a reason we haven't seen the brother. You know, <laughs> he's coming. He's coming. He's, he's going to be good. Uh, yeah, our jock is in the game and his name's Brandon. He's a real dude in real life. Bugsy. Yeah. Brandon Bugsy Wilson. He's a real dude. He's, he he's cool with like Jamie Foxx and stuff. Yeah, he's, he's as awesome as you can be. And, uh, and he's yeah. going to be in the game. He's on, like Jamie Foxx is playing next to him and we're like, hey dude, can you approve these photos? He's like, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Look, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll do everything in my power when playing him to make sure he doesn't die first. Yeah, but the dying part, that's up to you. <laughs> Just don't die. Like, we can't help you with that one. You have to, play, you have to get good. Get good. Get good. Always get good. Come on, praise the sun, guys. So uh, I just got a, a text first. I got a text from Wes. He just wants to remind everyone uh, the rage mode that we were talking about. Uh, most of you guys didn't know to press the four button on your keyboard or controller, or whichever. Uh, so it's automatic now. So that was another thing that we learned from you guys. Yeah, we so made rage it's just automatic. Be a thing. So next question, please. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask about the houses turning red in Jason's sense mode. Uh, it seemed to be whenever there was either uh, a radio on or when there was a counselor inside the building. Has that changed or was that the proper way that that mechanic worked? Dave? Uh, with the entire building turning red? Yeah, that's the intended behavior. Yeah, so if they were inside a building, then you wouldn't be able to locate exactly where they were. You'd just be able to know uh, that they were inside a structure. Um, 
And for that reason, it's like if a counselor <laughs> knows they're being pursued by Jason, they can try to escape into a building and then kind of lose them while they're in there and then get back out again. Yeah, so. this goes back to the previous abilities that he had a long time ago where he could never find anybody. And Jason not being able to find people makes for a horrible game. So when, when he's using that ability, if you're outside and you're scared, you'll see a red around your character, or Jason will. And if you're inside, he'll, he'll know that you're in there, but he won't know where. Yeah. So. All righty. Next question, sir. My name is Brandon. Uh, one question, or several. You get one. <laughs> How many maps do you plan on having, other than, you know, the camp and stuff like that? You plan on going to, like, New York, kind of like, you know, Jason takes Manhattan? Um, yeah, we're going to recreate Vice City. I mean, uh, Liberty City and I guess. <laughs> yeah. And now we're, just <laughs> we like 200 we're, we're, we're focused on, on completing the game right now. Um, we have ideas for DLC, of course. We've discussed stuff internally. But, like, right now, like, our goal is to deliver the best Pakenak Lodge map, the best Crystal Lake map, and the best Higgins Haven map that we can give for launch. And, and that's going to be a lot of content. I mean, these maps are somewhat procedural. Like, they change every time you play. Of course, every time a player jumps in the game, they're going to do something different. Jason's a different player every time. They're going to try different strategies. So there's a lot of longevity built into the gameplay and the maps themselves. If you donate more money, <laughs> that just buy the game, game and there'll be we more are. Kickstarter game. Don't. Tell your friends. But yeah, we have considered all maps from all the movies. We know all about them. We know exactly what they look like. We know it all. So they're on the list. It's just a matter of time and money and if people, if our game's successful and we can do things like that. So. All righty, next question. Sure. All righty, quick question. Um, so y'all are into all the, you know, the stress of the camp counselors showing where they're at. Um, being camp counselors, I'm sure some of them do drugs. Would any, no. like in the future, <laughs> would no. there be any drugs that'll no. you know, make them freak out more, make them no. calm down? The, no. the matches, ESRB and Peggy. The matches there, start. No drugs are in our game. Yeah. You wouldn't stop to do drugs if Jason's chasing Yeah, you already know Jason's there. I mean, I remember chat face. It's the same with sex. So like, can you have sex in the game? I'm like, yeah, Jason's chasing you. You're going to just give up. And oh, let's stop for a second. <laughs> I got an idea. We're going to die, so let's just have sex. Let's now, distract Jason. Our game starts when you know he's there. So no drugs. That, actually, it's funny. The ESRB doesn't like people doing drugs in games. Or having sex. When you start adding these things in with people getting brutally murdered, like innocent kids, that's okay. They no, well, that combination <laughs> is kind of a uh, no-no. Like, why did that even show up? Jeez. They're like, you're killing these kids, and then you're gonna have sex and do drugs. They're like, this don't even this cancel your game. Yeah, we had to pick our battles. Well, Ronnie, we need them. Quit talking. All right, so Th thank you. Uh, quick question: Do y'all have any uh, footage from the uh, counselor's point of view? There's probably a thousand videos of that. Um, not today. If oh, cinematic. Okay. He's asking from the kill perspective. Basically, every time a oh. kill is initiated by Jason, it's going to be a cinematic that both Jason and the council. Yeah, it's going to be a special camera like that that yeah. both players see. So. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Always for them to see. And yeah. All right. Next question. Let's find out. Go to this guy. I like the cardio I get. This is nice. Hey guys, my name is Ralph. Um, I wanted to know, uh, this was a rumor for a little bit, and I wanted to see if you, if you guys could put any truth to it, but if this game ends up becoming successful, would there be a possibility of there being like a Leatherface, or a Michael Myers, or uh, Freddy for another game title? Ooh, I want to take this one. I, I, I want to take this one. Um, Good. We love horror, but we're entirely focused on F-13 right now. Alright. Alright. Sound good? <laughs> no, I can say this like a hundred times a day. It's great. We love horror. Oh man, this is we'll fun. Get Let's get this guy. He's has hand up. Howdy, my name is Ricky. Um, shout out to all the people on the Friday the Thirteenth subreddit who were playing the game and were pointing out all the many, 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 many issues so clearly that. Everyone here. Tell us how you really feel. What is she talking about? Give them some credit. They did point out some of the major flaws and concisely what caused them. Um, yeah. One of the most popular threads while the beta was out was trying to kill Jason. I'm not going to ask you for directions on how to do it, but just a yes or no. While the beta was out, was it possible to kill Jason? Remember when I said we'll try to answer all the questions? We lied. We're not saying anything about that. Yeah, we don't. Okay, here's the best part. We've Jason. taken like a, we, we will not talk about his death because we want it to be that secret and that special when somebody finally does it. Has anyone found the jetpack to GTA 5 yet? <laughs> You're still looking for How about it? the aliens? 
Well, no, there's probably aliens. That's a thing. Okay. That's easy. Well, I, I, I was going to say, I, I remember there was that one play test where um, all of us got into a cabin. And we all had baseball bats or hatchets or something. And we sat there waiting for Jason to show up to see if we could pull it off. That was the most hysterical shit show I've ever seen. Yes. <laughs> somebody had a show. Like, yeah, we can do it. We're a team. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I think someone shot me in the back. I was about to hit it. <laughs> that was me, shot actually. <laughs> and then someone swung a bat and hit the other dude. And then we all died. If you knew the amount of people that messaged us asking about it, and we just smiled and grinned and said good luck all that yeah, it, it, yeah. we hope you guys yes jason out. can die that's all we're gonna say that, that's all we're gonna say next question hi uh i'm josh um do you guys have any extra modes of play or something like that to kind of add to the longevity or extra abilities for the camp counselors maybe uh two jasons in there with mo more counselors something like that and it'd be a competition or because the the one v mini multiplayer worked and i was really excited for games like evolve but after their launch it quickly dwindles down yeah and i kind of don't want that for this game so well well we were just talking about some of that uh earlier this evening and and basically uh the thing that evolve does is it requires everybody on the team to play well Otherwise, the game falls apart, and if somebody on the team, uh, especially on the, the actual uh, forces going against the monster, if they don't play well, then the monster's going to win because the balancing is basically four good players versus a monster. You know, a good monster versus four good players. You know, it's a relatively even match. You, you, you take a weak link, and all of a sudden it all falls apart. The balancing falls apart. But this game, Friday the 13th, becomes more fun um, when there are mistakes made, when people aren't that great. Things can still happen, and emergent outcomes happen, and stories are told after the match, and then you start another one. And uh, everybody's sharing their tips, and it just works. It's a little, it's, it, by approaching asymmetrical games through the lens of a horror film, we've kind of stumbled on a way yeah. to make asymmetrical games actually work. Well, I mean, the thing is, if, if, if you think about the slasher film, you don't have seven smart, talented, athletic counselors that are up against Jason. They all like maybe have a benefit here and there, but on the whole, they kind of suck. And that's <laughs> part of the fun of the movie. And the one thing that I've learned in the course of playing this game is when things go wrong, when someone's playing that doesn't know what they're doing, it's actually more fun. I, I think one of the best times we had, and this was months ago, you know, we, we had all the mechanics you know, together to be able to, you know, fix the car and drive the car out. And four people, there were four seats in the car, were there at the car, and one person who had the keys got in the car, and he took off and left three people behind him. <laughs> then the game got really, really fun. Because it's like, oh no, there's no more car left, what do we do? We've got to figure out how to work together and survive the next ten minutes. Oh shit, there's Jason. And that's, I, I, I was dead at this point, but I was just laughing in hysterics. This is the only game where failure might be more fun than success. And, it, it really, and I completely understand your point and, and the analog to evolve, but it really is a completely different, different species that this game is. Uh, but to answer your question real quickly, we did think about that, uh, but with our time and money, we haven't started those processes, and we may one day do it. But yeah, we, we thought about that. So we have tons of game modes in our head already that can be plugged in. Yeah, and what you guys saw from the meta game during the beta is just like a Not very small portion. Yeah. Like we're we're expanding on that a lot. Yeah, um, we have some more secrets. Sort of in that. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. So I got our next question from Jason here. Um, Jason, is what do you got? Is that Ted White part four? <laughs> uh, this is, I believe, part three. That's three. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can okay. Let's, in my eyes. All right. Let's see what he has to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, J Jason, what a fair point. What do you? <laughs> All right, yeah, no, that's a very good question. Thank you very much. Um, please don't kill me. Oh, God, shit. <laughs> hey, Ben, Ben, there's some front row here. Uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, get that last guy. What? I'm going, this, this gentleman right here. Get Charmin and this other guy here. I'm not giving a shot. <laughs> he wants to, he has a question. Love the shirt, uh, the jacket. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Uh, telekinesis or weed eaters? Weed, weed eaters? <laughs> Who's, ah, okay. Who's yeah. planting oh, these yeah. questions? <laughs> <laughs> no telekinesis character yet. Um, we thought about her. You know, maybe we've talked about it. We talked about her. We talked about her a lot. 
talked about all the people from the films coming in. Um, but we also said, how do they affect gameplay? If Tina's in our game and she's throwing things around the map and hitting him, is he still powerful? Is she his equivalent now? You know. So we had that same problem with Tommy Travis. Like, what's Tommy going to do in our game? So if we bring her into the game, that's a whole new ball game. So not at this moment. All righty. Next question. All right, next question. Ben, All right. come Bye. back to Charmin. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Andrew. Um, this is a very important question pertaining to the kills. Will we get the sleeping bag kill from part seven? That was in the beta. That was in the beta. Some people didn't find it. <laughs> no, yeah, some people didn't know that it was there because you don't really go hide in a tent. But it's there. Because the tent well, is it, the sleeping bag in the tent. As, yeah. Especially in the beta, if there are players who know the movies and you see the sleeping bag, you're like, oh, I'll go hide there. That yeah, sounds like we a actually great thing. Thing. We hid the sleeping bag in the tent. So if you didn't know that, oh, I need to go into the tent. That's why people missed it. So, but it's in the beta. There's video of it. Yeah, Lyric killed me when I was in the sleeping bag when he was Jason. I, I feel pretty bad about that one. <laughs> I hide there. All right. So my question is, being that uh, Wes had said that Rage is now activated automatically, I sat there and I saw on your screen there there was another ability for your top number four or Y button. What could that ability be? Now, if it's throwing knives, could it be interchangeable since... Six it's years not years throwing knives. It's not throwing knives. Yeah. So what is that ability? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you kill me? Come on! Jason knows. It is an ability. But he's we'll not talking. That. It's the ability to deflect. There's definitely a new ability there. I keep my eyes on everything. And we're not showing it yet. So yeah. that was something, a direct feedback from the beta that we also took into consideration. Something we had planned, but we didn't know that people wanted it as much as we did. So that fourth ability, it's, as you saw in the video, it's Jason stabbing someone from behind, right? It's, so that's, you can look at the icon and you can speculate all you want. And one day we'll, we'll show you, so. But there is a fourth ability. There is a fourth ability. Good eye. We thought we might sneak it by you guys. Oh, you didn't no, sneak it by me. Could not. <laughs> Next question. Will there be a story mode? No. Oh, we, we did. That. I mean, the, we went out and raised more money to get single-player missions and challenges. It's not a story mode per se. It's not until dawn, everything like that. Um, it's let you play the game offline with AI bots, and to give you single-player missions and challenges. I mean, it, it does play differently, though. It will play differently. Yeah, you'll get, but it's from Jason's perspective. So you'll have to like kill everyone in two minutes, or don't alert the counselors and kill them all. Different challenges for you to do around the maps. So just to give you something to do offline if you don't want to play online, you know, 100% of the time. So to do something like Until Dawn and do a story mode would cost us $25 million. <clears throat> yeah. Like don't underestimate that game. It's awesome. And but I mean, spent, they spent like eight years making that game, and it's. Incredible. Yeah, even those challenge missions, though, I mean, people are going to end up with their own stories to tell because yep. they're going to solve the, the, the missions different ways, and there's lots of things you can do within them, so it's... Yeah. Well, it, 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 I think also it opens up a sense of what you can do in the multiplayer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost really a it's it's very, very, very practical way to understand how dynamic how to stop is people. how you can play as a counselor or as Jason. Yeah, so... All right, so uh, guys, this is going to be our last question, Aww. considering we are coming up on uh, about three minutes left and knowing those guys. Well, hurry up. Early 2017. <laughs> Early 2017. Also, if you have uh, $25 million and want a story campaign, talk to us after. <laughs> we, take check. we can make it happen. If you guys have questions and you want to talk to us, we're going to be right out of these doors. Just line up. We're more than willing to talk to you guys. So if you didn't get your question answered, Hit us up. We're totally down to stay. But the final question, the most important one of the night, what do you got? Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> as, as a consensus as a team, if you had to pick one signature Jason kill from any of the movies, which would it be and why? We have all favorites. Everybody on this table has a different Jason that's your favorite, a different kill, a different favorite movie. We, are not, we don't all see eye to eye on Jason at all. No. So, what's your favorite? I mean, from the movies, personally, I like the sleeping bag kill, but in our game, the door smash kill is probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. What do you like? Okay, my favorite movie is six, okay. but my favorite kill is from the first one. You know, Kevin Bacon with the girl, yeah. and it just comes up right yeah. underneath them. It's just so clever, and it works. Yeah, so, so I, I really like uh, the sleeping bag kill in the movies as well. So we have a line here, this one time, Normally it's, uh, it's a lot of, if anybody else would have been from Elfonic, we probably would have had to fight it out, but. Um, in our game though, it's the, uh, the marshmallow kill. 
the basically the little rod that goes into the throat by the campfire and then they just can't breathe and it's like 20 seconds of them writhing on the ground dying it's like the most disturbing thing i can imagine in our game right so that's my favorite. I think kill. all of us are on an FBI watch list. Talking <laughs> about stuff like oh, that. Google search list. They should see our search list. Like, I'm scared, honestly. Uh, uh, my favorite in the movies probably Rick the Head Squeeze Part Two. Ah, yeah. Eyeball on the string. That's a good one. Yeah. And then my favorite one in the game is something we haven't shown you yet. Uh, for oh. the, so it's a secret. Trust yeah. me, it's good. Uh, it's for good. the movies, you I might grow up. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, from the movies, I really like the uh, the harpoon gun. I don't know why that one always like part three. That one always just like ooh, that sucks. Uh, from the game, I would also agree with Randy. I'm gonna go for the, uh, the little poker down the throat. Um, that's just poker. As hell, man! Like poker we got down some the throat. weird gameplay. <laughs> really? What? Really? That's a whole other kill. That's a different game. <laughs> Yeah, what did you just steal? Oh, through the neck. You tag what he just said. Poker down the throat. You missed it. It's, it's already over your head. Little poker. And with well, that, like said, we're getting and and with that everyone, thank you for coming to 513th, the panel. We hope you weren't that boring. You guys are amazing. Support of blah, blah, blah. If you want to talk to us, we'll be right out there. Thank you so much. This hey, was Jade. awesome. Jade, come up here. I think Jade's still here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here and all that stuff. <laughs> well, you can at least for a little while. <laughs> Do you know, uh. <laughs>